How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the state of Alabama executing a 44-year-old man by the name of Nathaniel Woods due to his involvement in the 2004 slaying of three police officers whose names were Harley Alfred Chisholm III, Carlos Winston Owen, and Charles Robert Bennett. Now, a fourth officer, Michael Collins, was shot but did not die, and of course, he's able to be an eyewitness. Now, this case has gotten quite a bit of attention all over the mainstream media due to Kim Kardashian being kind of like the tip of the spear. She's been everywhere talking about it, saying that, you know, he shouldn't have been on death row. And when he died, she mourned his miscarriage of justice. He didn't do anything. He wasn't the shooter. And it wasn't just her talking about it. You had other celebrities saying that this was a miscarriage of justice. Someone on the left, mostly on the left, and someone on the right, people like your rapper T.I., M.O.K. the Third, uh, Sean King, O.J. Simpson. A lot of people came out and said this was wrong. However, we can't talk about emotion. We can't talk about how we feel. Let's talk about what the law is in Alabama, and let's talk about facts, the facts of the case of which he got convicted. Now, let's talk about this case. Let's go back to 2004. Nathaniel Woods, Kerry Spencer, and Tyron Bubba Cooper had a dope house in Birmingham, Alabama. It was a very well-known spot. They would serve at least about 100 people a day out of that spot, if not more. And that day, the officers were coming to the spot. I guess they were doing surveillance or whatnot. They had been there like twice before the third and final time. The second time, they came looking for, I think, Bubba and... Woods was there, the guy that just got executed, he was there, almost got into a fight with the cop. I hate cops, is that in the third? Take that badge off, I F you up. Now, according to witnesses, the cop took his badge off, was getting ready to fight him, but then the woman that was right there said, no, don't fight, break it up, whatever, whatever. That's what the witnesses said. It may be true, it may be false, but I don't know. Either way it goes, the witnesses and the officer both say that Woods was being combative towards the officers. Anyway, the officers don't like what Woods is doing, so they go and look to see if he has a warrant. And of course he does in a neighboring place, not in Birmingham, but somewhere close by. So they go back the third time to the house the afternoon with the warrant in hand. They go around back where Woods is at. They show him not only the warrant, but a printout of his own picture through the screen. Now, he says, that ain't me, this, that, and the third, cusses him out, and then retreats back into the home. But when he retreats, he leaves the screen door open. And of course, they have a warrant. They can go in there after him and arrest him. Now, you have two officers in the front and two in the back to execute this whole thing. The two officers in the back go and try to arrest him. One guy's in the front. And the other guy that was in the front comes around back to also show the warrant. Now, as the one guy that came in last is trying to leave, he feels like he's been hit in his side. Okay. And he realizes, okay, I'm being shot. So then he runs behind the car. As he runs behind the car to take cover, the guys that are inside, his other officers, have been shot. The two that were right there trying to arrest him, I think the one guy that was in the front, they had been shot. Spencer, one of Woods' friends in the dope spot, had come down probably from upstairs or somewhere with a rifle and shot the officer's point blank range. After the murder, Woods and Spencer leave, go to a neighbor's house. Spencer hides in an attic where he's later found, of course, by the police. Woods is like sitting on the front of a patio or something like that, calm as could be. Now, some are going to say he didn't kill anybody. He surrendered right away. He was getting handcuffed. Okay, that's fine. But if you see three officers, really four officers get shot and three die right in front of you, you leave. Why would you be so calm and not trying to hide or nothing like that? Are you trying to make it seem like, oh, I didn't do anything. I didn't shoot anybody to that in the third to save yourself. Is that what it is? I'm not really sure, but... They arrest him right there on the spot, right from the porch he was sitting on. And like I said, they went and got Spencer later. Now, I got to add this part in here because it's kind of important and it could make a difference. But at the same time, not really. 
the guy Bubba, who was also there with them in the dope house, not at that day or that time, but in general, he'd be there. He said that he was paying off the officers between three and 500 bucks a week so they would leave the dope spot alone and let them continue to get money and be the only guys over there that were allowed to get money in that part of Birmingham. That's what he says, but that could be true. It could be false. I don't really know. Either way it goes, Spencer and Woods are responsible. Spencer is a guy that came down and shot the officers. Woods is a guy that is being accused of luring them into the house. Because remember, when they came to the back with the warrant, he went into the home, but left the door open, the screen door. Once he went inside the house, they followed him and their guard was down because he wasn't trying to fight or nothing like that. He went into the house and then he went after him. No guns on or nothing like that. All they had was their mace. He was like, I give up, I give up. Don't spray their mace on me. But by, ben, by them being so relaxed, that's what let them open to the guy coming down with his rifle and shooting him. Three officers killed in that house, one shot, but survived. Now, in Alabama, the law says if you are an accomplice to capital murder, which is what this was, three officers shot at once as capital murder. If you are involved, you don't have to be the shooter. You can just be there and you get the same charge, the same sentence as the actual shooter. It's the same thing like if you are a bank robbery getaway driver, you may not be the guy inside the bank with the guns and taking the money, but you're an accomplice. So when they go down, you go down too, you get the same thing they get. Now, some are going to say, oh, well, shouldn't be the death penalty, this, that, and the third. Well, okay, that's fine. But at that point, you can't just tell the governor to not execute him because of how you feel. The law is a law. There have been other people that have been executed in Alabama for doing the same thing, not the exact same thing or exact same case, but being an accomplice to capital murder, you get the same thing as the actual murderer. You had no gun, you had no knife. It don't matter because you were there. You were complicit. You set them up. And when the officers are being shot, you didn't try to stop the guy. You didn't say, no, nah, don't do that. Stop, stop. You know, you didn't call the police. You fled. You left. So, no, you're responsible the same as someone else. This is why I was always told, you know, don't be around the wrong people, hang with the right crowd, because you can just be minding your business. Like if you were in the car riding, there's a drive by that happens. You are going down the same as everybody else in the car. That's generally how that works, especially in the case like this, where he was clearly involved. He didn't like the police got into a confrontation with him. Witnesses said that he said he wanted to kill the officers and afterwards he said, yeah, we killed them MFers. This guy deserves what he got. Now, you may not be for the death penalty and that's fine, but that's a law issue, not for this particular case to just be decided on. You can't just change the law randomly because of how you feel. The law is a law and it's pretty much it. I don't see anything that would not make him be complicit. He was not a hostage. He was not there just minding his own business. He was involved. That's why he got what he got. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that Nathaniel Woods should have gotten a death penalty for his involvement in the murder of three police officers and the shooting of another one? If that's your viewpoint, let me know why in the comments below. Or should he have not gotten a death penalty? If not, then what should he have gotten? Okay. He did not try to prevent them for being killed. He fled. He ain't called the police. So what should he have gotten? 20, 25 years for what? Like, what would the crime actually be that he would get charged for? He was involved. You can't be involved with these kind of things and avoid the penalty. That's simple as that. It is what it is. The penalty is that way. So people don't get involved with things like this. Don't be an accomplice to a triple homicide. Maybe you won't get death row. Simple as that. But whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.